Does God always answer prayer? You know, I think a lot of the popular Christian slogans and cliches on that topic are just flat out wrong, if we're being honest. And so in this video, I want to explore that question and help us get a clearer understanding of what we should expect from God when it comes to prayer. Hey, if we're just meeting for the first time, my name is John. I've been a pastor and a Bible college professor for really a number of years. And my heart is to help people understand the Bible and do so in a way that's connected to everyday life. And so that's what I try to do here on my YouTube channel is teach the Bible in a way that's connected to everyday life. So let's jump right into this question. Does God always answer prayer? You know, there's this crazy notion among Christians that the answer to that is yes, God always answers prayer. And sometimes we say things like, oh yeah, God always answers prayer. Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no, sometimes the answer is wait. And I suppose maybe that helps a little bit, but the fact is, is when we say, oh, God answered my prayer, what do we mean by that? Well, we don't mean he said no, we don't mean he said wait. When we say God answered my prayer, we mean, he gave me what I asked for. He did what I asked him to do, right? That's how we use that phrase. And if we're going to be consistent and we're going to be honest, God doesn't always do that. God doesn't always give us what we ask for. God doesn't always do what we ask him to do, does he? So God doesn't always answer our prayers in that sense. And when we tell people that God always answers our prayer, we're actually setting people up for all sorts of frustration, all sorts of disappointment, a whole lot of spiritual disillusionment. I have a pastor friend who uh, a number of years ago, someone he dearly loved was diagnosed with cancer, someone who actually worked on staff at the church. And he began to pray and pray earnestly and pray in deep faith that God would heal this man. He even invited the church to fast and pray. And so the church fasted and prayed and this particular friend of his died. Cancer won and he died. And it sent my pastor friend into a really a deep, dark spiritual depression, a deep, dark spiritual disillusionment because he was sure God was going to answer his prayer because they prayed and they prayed in faith and they fasted even and prayed. And God didn't answer their prayer. Uh, Dave wasn't healed of his cancer. And that is such a painful place to lead people when we, when we expect God to always answer our prayers, it leads to a lot of spiritual disillusionment. And the fact is, God just doesn't always do that. I think of another example where uh, a family I know, um, dad and son were traveling on a business trip and they were praying for a safe flight. They were praying for safe travels, right? And the plane crashed and dad died. The son survived but was actually lying in the plane on top of dad when dad died. Man, what happened? Did they just not have enough faith or what? They prayed for a safe trip and it didn't turn out. Uh, we had some good friends. When my wife was pregnant, she was pregnant. Uh, this friend of ours was pregnant as well. And so my wife and Teresa were both pregnant at the same time, both faithful, godly, God-fearing, prayer-filled people, right? Like seeking Jesus, serving Jesus, living with and for Jesus, both praying for a healthy pregnancy and a healthy labor and deliver delivery. We had a healthy child. Their baby died in utero. Um, why is that? Is there something wrong with their faith? Well, no, God just doesn't always do what we ask him to do. God doesn't always answer our prayers. And sometimes when we teach that kind of stuff, or sometimes when we believe that kind of stuff, we can almost, we can almost abuse people spiritually. I have another pastor friend who was talking to somebody in his office and he was talking about a, a, a friend of his whose daughter had been brutally raped and murdered a number of years prior. And this fellow in the office basically said, well, if they'd had enough faith and their relationship with God was good enough, he wouldn't let that happen to him. No way, man. That's just not the way it works. That is borderline spiritual abuse. And, and we need to be very careful about that. Um, have another friend whose uh, five-year-old daughter was diagnosed with cancer, serious cancer, softball-sized tumor in her, her stomach. And um, over time, well-meaning Christian people kept coming to him and saying, we're just going to pray in faith and we're just going to claim God's promises and we're going to expect God to heal. And we just know he will do it. And finally, my friend 
frustrated enough. Uh, he's a philosophy professor at a university here in town. He, he looked at uh, one of these people and he said, we don't have that promise. We don't have any guarantee that God's going to answer that prayer. We don't know what God will choose to do in this case. So I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't actually say that. Man, I, I applaud him for that response because the fact is, is our faith is rooted in the promises of God. And if we don't have a definitive, clear promise, then we can't expect God to always do what we ask him to do. And God has never promised that he's going to answer every prayer. God has promised he'll hear all our prayers, but God hasn't promised he's going to do what we ask in all our prayers. Two examples from scripture that I think of. The first comes from Acts chapter 12. If you're familiar with the story in Acts 12, the apostle Peter is in prison. The apostle Peter um, is praying. The church is praying for the apostle Peter. And um, it's the night before. I don't know why God has a flair for the dramatic, but it's the night before Peter's supposed to be executed. And now God finally uh, sends an angel and breaks Peter out of jail. He goes and sees the church. They're shocked that God actually answered their prayers. And then Peter has to kind of go into hiding for a little bit. Okay, that's great. God, you answered our prayers and you set the apostle Peter free. But don't forget how Acts chapter 12 begins. Acts chapter 12 begins with the apostle James being beheaded and executed for his faith. Why did God send an angel to rescue one apostle, but not send an angel to rescue the others. I mean, did Peter have more faith than James? Did the church not pray as well for James as they prayed for Peter? I mean, well, no. God makes these choices. When we're talking about prayer, we're, we're not talking about like a cosmic vending machine in the sky. We say the right words. We go through the right formula. We do it with enough energy. Boom, we're going to get the right result. And, and so they must have done it with the right way, with the right words, with the right energy in Peter's case, but not in James's case. That's just not the way it works. Um, we're dealing with a person, the person of God, and God makes choices, and those choices are difficult. In fact, in that case in Acts chapter 12, when God has to, when God answers the church's prayer on behalf of Peter, well, if you keep reading the story, what happens? Well, the guards who uh, were unbelievers and didn't know Jesus, the guards were executed by the Roman government because they had failed to guard Peter. And God has to make these choices. If I break Peter out of jail, it's going to lead to four people who don't know the true God to be executed. And, and all the consequences of a Christless eternity. God has to make these choices. And so when we pray, we're talking to God, who we believe, we need to believe, is smarter than us, wiser than us, has a bigger perspective than us. And we need him to make the best choice. And it's not always the choice we want him to make. Another example from scripture, probably the most powerful, most poignant example from scripture is Jesus himself. It's the night before his crucifixion. Jesus is in the garden with his friends. He tells them to wait here. He goes a little further, takes three with him, invites them to pray along with him. And then he goes even a little further beyond them. And he kneels down in the garden and Jesus begins to pray. And what does he pray? God, if it's possible, take this cup from me. God, if it's possible, I don't want to go to the cross. I don't want to do what I'm, I know is about to come. But, he says, not my will, but yours be done. My friends, that's the way we need to learn to pray. We need to learn to pray like Jesus, who, who had a very real and strong pressing desire, so much so that the apostle, or that Luke tells us that he, he began to sweat great drops of blood. Um, there was great anxiety, great stress in this moment. He sincerely and earnestly did not want to go to the cross. And yet, God, that's what I want. But ultimately what I want is what you want. We need to learn to pray that way. Not my will, but yours be done. And we need to trust with real confidence that our Father in heaven knows best. And sometimes that means giving us what we want. Sometimes that means withholding what we want because God knows best. And so he doesn't always answer our prayers and he doesn't always do what uh, we would ask him to do. God, God knows best and sometimes what he chooses to do is different than what we want. And that's hard, that's painful, and in the case of Jesus, it led to the cross. And Jesus, Jesus didn't get what he wanted, he got what God wanted, so that you and I could get ultimately what we most need, and that's a relationship with God. And aren't we grateful that Jesus didn't insist upon his will? 
And I think the same could be said for you and for me. So let's learn to pray humbly, trusting that our Father knows best. Let's learn to believe that when He doesn't answer our, answer our prayers, that he, he has a bigger perspective and He has a bigger understanding and we can keep asking and maybe God will bring some clarity. Maybe He will uh, do something similar to what we want down the line. Maybe He'll never do what we want. Um, but it's because He knows best. Not my will, but yours be done. And then let's trust Him to believe that He is good and He is wise. And so whatever He brings our way is going to be both for our good and it's going to be the very best thing for us. It's going to be wise for us. Hey, if you're new here and you haven't already, I'd, I'd encourage you to go ahead and click subscribe right up here so that you never miss an episode. I'll put some other videos right up on the screen over here that you can check out as well. God bless you guys and let's talk again soon.